What's up guys, GD here and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to correctly play one of the most iconic riffs from Dream Theater. Yes, we're talking about Pull Me Under. Let's do this. All right, so I've got a close-up shot of my guitar. Hopefully you can see all the frets and disclaimer, I'm going to be using my camera audio here. So pardon any bad audio quality just focus on the riff. Now, as far as the riff is concerned, it's not a super complicated riff. It's got a good amount of chugga chugga palm muting and it's got a bunch of power chords, which I'll come to. Unlike any other, you know, riffs from Petrucci, which are like super hard to play and super complicated and technical, this one is pretty straightforward and simple. In order to play this really good and sound really good, there are a couple of things that you'd need to have uh, under your belt. The first one being obviously palm muting. If you don't know what palm muting is, basically when you play a power chord and you mute your uh, guitar strings with your palm of the right hand, you get this sound. Which is called palm muting. Plenty of lessons out there. I'm not going to spend too much time over here. The second thing that you really need to nail uh, well for playing this riff is dynamics. I believe that you know when the how hard you pick the strings and what your pick attack is is really going to define uh, how good the riff sounds. A good pick of choice would be a thick pick. I am playing the JP signature pick here. This is a jazz three, I believe. It's kind of thick and it's got a good attack really love these picks and i've been using them for a while so in terms of chord the chords that are there in this particular riff are seven of them you've got the e then you got f f sharp g a c sharp and d so it's pretty much in the realm of e minor key but as with all riffs from petrucci he's adding in some bit of chromatism there uh, by adding in the f and the c sharp just to make that sense of suspense and uh, create that tension in the listener's uh, mind to you know come back to that e chord again what i'm going to do is i'm going to break the riff section by section and we're going to cover four sections or four five sections i'll come to that in a bit let's look at section number one and hear how it sounds so section one has these chords. You'll have E and then you'll have A and then G. Basically every section will have a, some bit of common parts in there like the start and the end mostly and uh, then the chords in between will change. So the chugging part in the E will be common. But the, the what's gonna change is the way you play those power chords. See, I've been playing this riff wrong for many, many years and not until I saw Petrucci playing it, I realized that I was playing it wrong. The right way to play it is slightly different. What he actually does is instead of playing the power chords like this or like this, which I've seen mostly people do, he plays it in a different way, which is... So what he's doing there is basically, interestingly, he's taking the fifth and taking the root which is the same as this, but completely ignoring the root on the E string and making it into a new sort of a power chord. It sounds kind of tight and it's got the right attack. So, and then speaking of attack, when you hit these two notes, you need to ensure that you're hitting it with the right attack and you're muting the top E string so that you don't get that external buzz and the otherwise this, the riff's just gonna sound really muffled. So what he's doing there is just sliding from a, a to G as you would do over here, but he's doing it differently. So that's section one. Played slowly, it sounds like this. Now coming to section two, it's pretty much simple uh, and similar to section one, but again, it's got different chords in between. The E chugging is gonna be common. Uh, and this time you're doing chords of E, F sharp and G. Um, but again, instead of playing, what he's playing is, so remember the attack thing that I talked about, you really need to, you know, hit it hard and make kind of come close to hitting a pinch harmonic, if you know what I mean, but not getting a pinch harmonic. If you know what I'm talking about, then you know what I'm talking about. So what he's doing in section two is instead of playing F sharp like this is again using the same trick and you're playing F sharp like this over here, which is going to be a C sharp and then the root again, which is on the D string third fret, which is your F sharp note again. So he's just sliding that from there to create the G like that. So section two played slow would sound like this. So far section one and two combined slow sound like this. So that's section one and two. Section three is similar to section um, one and two. Again, it's got the same 
E in this in the beginning but instead of the chords are different now after that which is going to be C sharp and G so it's pretty weird because now you've got a string jump here happening from uh, and a diagonal upper motion which is always kind of tricky to do in the guitar so what he does is actually not play that because I believe it kind of breaks the continuity of the riff and adds in a gap in there because you're jumping strings what he's actually doing is playing it like this so what he's doing there is again he's playing C sharp the normal way which is these two notes over here and then instead of playing G like this he is going and playing G the normal way again which we did earlier which is like this so section 3 played slow would sound like this so section 1, 2 and 3 played slow sound like this alright so uh, just stepping into section 4. Section 4 is going to be as similar to section 2 but it's going to end instead of ending on the E it's going to end on a different chord which is going to be D. So it's going to be played slightly differently from section 2. Remember in section 2 we did this but instead this time we're going to do so in this section, instead of playing uh, F sharp and G like this, what he did is actually played F sharp and G the normal way just to add some variation, I guess. And if you did not notice, I also played the D chord slightly differently. What he does there actually, instead of playing the D chord like this, which is going to be a root and the fifth, which is an A, what he's doing is he's taking the A note and he's adding it on top again, which is going to be on the E string to create a much more heavier and powerful D chord. Uh, which I think he does in a lot of his tracks as well. So the D sounds like this with the uh, lower fifth kind of added in. So section four, slow is sounding like this. And you gotta remember to do those two chugs in between before you hit the D chord zone. So. That's important. Now section five is kind of section four but when he comes to the second bar of the riff when he plays all sections one two and three again but instead of in section four ending on the d chord this time what he does is ends on the f chord so the second time when the riff is played it's played like this everything else is the same it's just that it ends on the f chord over there so section one two three and four all played together sound like this Actually, let's just play the whole riff, all the sections. And then he goes into double time of the same parts again, so I'm not going to cover that. So that's pretty much it folks, that's the riff that I wanted to share with you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know in the comment section below what you guys think about such sort of videos as well. This channel has been mostly about tone and I'd love to give this sort of a guitar tutorial sort of a videos a try as well. So if you guys like this content, let me know in the comments. I'd be more than happy to cover more such videos as well and more riffs as well. Now before we go and wrap up this video and probably 2021 i want to wish you and your family a very very happy new year and a merry christmas as well so make sure you take some time out from whatever you do and spend it with your family and loved ones i'll be taking some time out as well from my work and from making these videos for you guys so that i can spend some time with my family and most importantly before you go and do that make sure you give this video a thumbs up and if you aren't subscribed please go ahead and do so what a way to end 2021 for me the channel is nearly at 3000 subscribers and i never thought i'd get this far so thank you for each one of you who subscribed and if you aren't subscribed by now please go ahead and do so support the channel i'd really appreciate it so until I see you guys in the next one, make sure you stay safe folks and keep rocking. Cheers. Bye-bye.